So uh, please welcome to the stage James Montague and Claire Makin. <laughs> Excellent. So let's start off. Claire, do you want to just introduce yourself for those people who don't know you? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. So for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name's Claire Makin. I've worked here at Geocom now for 12 years. Eight years on the product team. Um, between myself and my team, we have brought to market a lot of your all IP products that you consume today. So beginning with SIP trunking, moving on to hosted technologies, so hosted seats, um, single line voice, which we now have two variants of, um, and uh, more recently, Microsoft Teams, which we're all super excited about. Super, thank you, Claire. And James, same question to you. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, James Montague, I head up our connectivity portfolio. It's been about 15 years for me in the business. Um, and my team look after the length and breadth of the, the Ethernet and broadband portfolio. So, you know, all those products you're using as that fundamental connectivity to support your all IP journey. Brilliant. Now, I also happen to know that both of you are the business leaders for Geocom's All IP program uh, and have been working on it for some time. So we've definitely got the right people here, folks, which is always useful. So maybe let's just kick off by framing for us, if you will, um, the, the All IP opportunity and perhaps sharing with us a little bit about how we're doing today. And Claire, I think we're going to come to you first on this one. It wouldn't be an All IP event without um, taking a look at where we're at today. So... Up on the, uh, on the screen behind you is a little diagram from OpenReach Statistics. And if you remember back to what Nathan was saying, we started this back in 2018. Uh, and there were 16 million lines to transition over to, to all IP. And you'll be pleased to know today we've got to around 9.5 million. That's what we've got left. That's around 40% transitioned in the last five years. Um, now, what does that mean to us? How many are we putting for a week? Um, so at the moment, we're looking at um, transitioning over, as an industry, around 48,000 lines per week. So that's a significant amount. But it's not quite where we need to be as an industry. So we, um, we're expecting that the stop sell in September, of course, I hope everybody's aware of that, um, will accelerate that. And OpenReach have, have told us that we need to get to a point where we need to increase that. Our output that we're doing at the moment, this impacts everybody in the room, by around 50%. That would take us to... 70,000 lines a week that are transitioning over to all IP. And that, of course, is a steady movement. So that's equally every week transitioning those over on the assumption that there's no tricky stuff to move. So the, the most important thing is that we take away from this today is that we need to do something now. We need to act now. Yeah, great stuff. Um, and just in terms of, I guess, the audience we have with us today, we have a lot of partners in the audience. Can you just give us a bit more context as to what all of that means from their perspectives? Sure, okay. So we, we broke this down a little bit um, and actually took a look at the timeline in terms of what we've achieved over the last couple of years. And if you look back to 2018, this is industry as a whole, um, and we've, we've used multiple parts of data to try and work this out. But you'll see that the biggest chunk um, back in 2018, um, around 7% of what we had was, um, was all IP. So when I talk about all IP products, I'm talking about single order connectivity, SIP trunking, hosted seats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these were the early adapters for VoIP services, but I think it's really important to note um, that back in 2018 was the first launch of it. We launched FTTP, didn't we, Jane? We did, yeah. But what we've actually seen and what's really important here is that every two years we've doubled what we've been doing. So we took, went from 7% to 15%. Back in 2022, then now we're at 30%. And around about today, as an industry, we're at that 40%. So that 60% is actually our opportunity as to what's left. However, there's a lot to do in such a short period of time. Because remember, we did this over five years, and we've only got two left. What we would actually advise is our services or your services to get to a point where you're actually 80% of the way there by the end of next year. So that's by the end of uh, 2024 in December, you should have 80% of your base transitioned. And that leaves the tricky stuff, that last 20% that it could be alarm lines, lift lines, etc. That's the bit that you want to have left that you, you need to worry about. And it will give you the option then um, to then try and address some of the rest of that opportunity, that 60%. Yep. Yeah, fantastic stuff. And I guess as we're all listening to this, there's probably a few elephants swimming around. If elephants do swim, I think they're probably quite decent swimmers. I don't know for sure. Um, perhaps someone could find that out. We've all got Wi-Fi now. Can elephants swim? 
Um, <laughs> but there are probably a few elephants knocking around in the room, James. And one of those, without a shadow of a doubt, will be, uh, is, do we really believe that open reach are going to follow through and close the PSTN? Well, sir, it's an excellent question. And uh, for, for when, when we look at this, you know, we can't underestimate what we've built up as a country, as, as a world on this technology uh, over the last 100 plus years. And there are things that are difficult to move. Mm. That, that, that's the reality of it. Um, but I think what we need to think about, for me, it's rather than speculate on a, on a date move, is to think about actually the investments that are going on, the things that have been happening the last couple of years. Uh, so principally, we look at the all IP um, stop sale, uh, sorry, the, the stop sale of traditional WLR and uh, traditional broadband products. That was forecast years in advance, and it happened last month. That's the reality of where we're at. So that was followed through. Uh, and really, when we look at FTTP, there's a, there's a slide for that. And this is, this is really where it gets interesting. There's billions of pounds of investment from OpenReach, also City Fiber and other altnets. And that is growing at pace. It's a huge technology change. It ultimately provides the fundamental foundations for our digital world as we move forward, coupled with, with Ethernet. Those two products together is what the backbone of every business and what your kids are probably watching at 4 o'clock this afternoon on Netflix. It is, that's what they'll be doing. Um, that's a huge investment, and it is moving at pace. So when we think about that investment, we think about what OpenReach have already followed through as well. Fundamentally, I, I don't think we can speculate on that it won't happen. Mm. Even if it moved by a month or two, the trajectory is set, the investment is set, billions are being poured into this transition. It's going to happen, and we're going to be at that 100% all IP. Okay, so Geocom view, you heard it, is PSTN happening, switch off happening? Not quite necessarily locked on dates, but um, we should plan on that basis. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good progress. So let's think about that post switch off world then. Can you just maybe give us a sense of, of what that new technology landscape looks like in 2025? Um, Claire, do you want to talk us through voice first and then James, if you could do the same on data? Absolutely. Um, well, I think you heard it from Nathan actually as well. Um, teams will play a huge part of that. I think, um, can I actually just have a show of hands in the audience who is using Teams on a daily basis at the moment? Wow, that's a lot Do you mean of using it or selling it? Uh, let, let's have a, who is selling Teams? Or Teams phone. Oh, ah, great. Handle. Okay. <laughs> so we just, just to translate for, for those who aren't sat at the front, who can see everybody. I think we had probably around ninety percent of people using Teams then, um, yeah. and then only maybe ten percent selling it. So there's a huge opportunity there, and um, it will form part of this. These graphs actually refer to the technology as of the end of. 2025 and this is based on not just what we're doing but what we're seeing in industry and the statistics that Cavell uh, provide us as well and we see um, there should be no surprises here teams being a huge part of this and it will only get bigger now for those partners in the room do not panic um, it's not the end of the world for VoIP at all it still has a place it still provides us with all the feature rich features um, that we need today and I'd just like to thank the audience because you've saved us an absolute fortune on teams based surveys off the back of that question. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent thank you Claire and James just talk us through data. Yeah of course so we can see Sajir's got a really big chunk of chunk of that pie. Um, it's that fundamental technology that enables us to move from an FTTC ADSL world, um, moving away from, from, from that PSTN. It's a, it's a big enabler for that. And particularly if you're on FTTC already, it's a really easy switch, really, really easy switch. ADSL still has its place. You'll see single order ADSL up there. Um, we love a good acronym in this industry. Um, we probably should have <laughs> stuck a workshop in this afternoon just to make a few up. Um, so... Um, and the really important thing within the acronyms, by the way, is make it exactly like another acronym, but different, so that we all get confused. Um, and so ADSL has a place, but it's very much that technology for when my customers got multiple sites and I can't serve them with anything else, how can you, how can you get them connected? So it's an important thing, but it's, it's going to diminish over time. But you see FTTP has got a big chunk of that, um, of that diagram. And that's what we see, you saw in the previous slide, that adoption of FTTP is really, really fast. Um, and it is what the next innovation of Uber, Netflix, 
whatever it may be, will come off the back of that network. So that will, by delivering that product, and we're seeing that adoption take, take place at rapid rate, because ultimately customers are realizing the benefit that super reliable, faster connectivity is doing to their business and helping that business to grow. Yeah, fantastic. So very, very changed landscapes. Looking out at 2025, it seems, um, let's just deal with another swimming elephant. I think maybe a few people in the audience may be th looking at some of the stats. I think, Claire, you quoted 60% of assets need to move in the next two years and could be forgiven for thinking, come on, that's a lot of hard work. Is that really, is that really what we're going to stare at now? Um, so just maybe if you could just share a little bit of advice for partners thinking that one through and starting to mobilise against it. Yeah, so like we, we, we've broken this down a little bit for, for everybody in the room here in terms of um, dates, deadlines, et cetera, and, and where you should be and what you should be doing at which point in time. So we've broken that into a preparation phase and an action phase. And for those of you who are familiar with our um, partner pack, you'll recognise some of these five A's that we're about to pop on screen. So the first one, um, which is something that we probably all have been doing, or hopefully, I don't see any too, any worried faces in the room just yet. Um, we should have all been looking at analysing our base, looking at our assets, seeing what we have out there and what products that they can transition to. Um, now, the next one on there is making arrangements uh, for our businesses to make sure that our staff uh, are trained, our sales teams are trained on the new products that we bring into market and the ones that you have agreed on with your vendors, so which host of product to use, which vendor to use for technology, um, such as fibre to the premise, et cetera, et cetera. And that is really important. Um, not dropping any hints here, but the right technology vendor can really help you with this, but I'm not going to steal James's thunder. Um, but it's really important that you pick a technology partner that has the right products, the right platforms, um, and that can really enable you on this journey. The fourth one, um, you know, we are a comms industry. We have to still remember that there are rules in place. So please make sure that we were still following the guidelines from the OTA, asking the right point of sale questions to make sure that we're not transitioning over, you know, um, alarm lines, lift lines, care lines, services, et cetera, where we're going to end up cutting that customer off. Um, really important. I mean, that's another swimming elephant in the room. <laughs> where uh, we've just got to make sure that we're, we're transitioning these products to, to the right ones uh, and keeping up to date with what's happening within the industry as well. And actually, if anybody has read the partner guide, you'll actually notice that there was only four um, A's, but we have actually added a last one because what is really important is that we act now. We put these things in place so that we're actively migrating these services. And this is a fantastic framework to start utilising. And if you haven't already started this, um, perhaps we can help, James? <laughs> well, that's, absolutely, it is a great framework. Um, I must admit, it's one of the first things that I zeroed in when I joined. It's just a, a great way to set this out. And I'm sure lots of people here today have used it and thought it through and started taking action on it. But um, on that point of what we're doing as Geocon to support partners, because it's a hell of a task, isn't it, if you're, if you're just contemplating or even if you're partway through it. Um, James, can you just talk us through what we're actually putting on the table to support partners through this journey? So, so I want to first reflect really on how do we help end customers grow um, and become more reliable about what they're doing and invent the next big thing. Um, you know, the channel is uniquely placed. So with that in mind, we, we did a lot of research. We, we talked to our talked to a lot of our partners about their challenges. Um, you know, you've got this, this dual world of winning lots of new business every day, which we need to, to keep moving the business forward, as well as how do we transform our existing base? How do we do both at the same time? You know, you, you don't necessarily have thousands of people to chuck at that problem, right? Um, so we took that and we went, well, actually, Geocom can help with that. We can absolutely help with that. So today, I'm really pleased to introduce our all IP managed service. Uh, this is a service where we have really reshaped how our business operates to deliver for you as our partners. Um, so we've taken our people right across the business. Uh, we've trained them. We've been part of this all, all, all IP journey for five years plus now. And we've wrapped that all in with our expertise and our project management services in order to make it easier for you guys to to, to get on with what you do best, add in your value, and actually we'll, we'll take care of the, you know, how do we you know, bulk place 100 orders? How do we, you know, what data 
uh, I need to collect data on these services and I need to uh, understand what the technology upgrade is. So we wrap that in with also the best commercial benefits. So realize that there is an economics to this, right? How, how do I do that? Um, and uh, we, we've got, uh, today we are, we're, we're pleased to offer uh, free base migrations for WR, free upgrades to Sajir. We saw on the pie chart earlier, that's a massive part of what we've all got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so free upgrades to Sajir from ADIS or FTTC, and it's really straightforward to do, and also incentive on City Fiber FTTP. So, and we'll keep doing that, we all, and we'll work with you to support you. And the great news is this launches tomorrow. Absolutely fantastic. Um, folks, is that going to be useful to you? when you're considering your journeys. If it is, please come and talk to us about it because uh, we'd really love to engage with you, really love to uh, continue those conversations. James, thank you very much for sharing that with us. There is one final thing before we just move to a few Slido questions. Um, you did have a W on the previous screen, if I'm not mistaken, seems to have disappeared. So we know what we're doing to, to act, but what, are, what is the W all about? I'm really glad you asked that because it obviously it was a bit of a teed up question there, it but, <laughs> but um, not that they've all been teed up. Uh, yeah. I think we've got away with it, Claire. Just keep going. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Yeah. So with our five A's and everything that we're doing to support our partners from helping you transition and bring over your WLR bases to us for free. So you are with the best technology vendor uh, of choice, uh, Geocom, who are 100% partner focused, 100% um, channel focused for your organization. What we want to do is be in a fantastic position to simplify what is happening through all the services that we offer on screen on here, from helping you understand industry updates, from providing managed services, from providing the right products there, the right expertise within the business. We've even got white labeled collateral and marketing campaigns for you to send out to your customers. Collectively, when you've got everything over at Geocom, that will enable you to win at all IP. That is the most important thing, the fact that we can enable you to do that. Thank you, Claire. Fantastic answer. Um, just going to, before we before we wrap up this session, just going to look at what we got on Slido. Um, so, Charlie, I mentioned to you earlier on, uh, your question was how many customers are still yet to migrate? I think we covered that. 9.5 million. There you go. Spot on. Um, supplementary part of Charlie's question, what does the customer journey look like? Um, are we going to be talking about that some more later on this afternoon? Or is that a side conversation? Uh, I think it's a side conversation. It's a little bit of a complex question, isn't it? Because the customer journey will vary depending on what, um, what their requirements are. But from a WLR perspective, that will vary depending on if that line is being used for making calls, if it's used for alarm line services. It may vary, which is why it's so important to analyse your base. And I'm sure you've got a, a view on that as well. Yeah, it is. So, so, I mean, I, I've, uh, in past roles, I've, I've you know, run tech support for you know, hosted services. And there, there are lots of customers out there which you've deployed, which have an FTTC. You're not, you're not using that voice side of the line, right? Probably like most of us aren't doing that in our houses. You know, we're mobile and, and you're using your data off of, off of your broadband, right? So lots of those type of customers. And the move to Sajir is an overnight switch that automatically happens at 3 in the morning. Um, and we've tested that extensively, um, and, it, and it works very well. So, and then with FTTP, you've got to put new infrastructure in, so you've got to plan around that. But ultimately, the customer is realizing lots of benefits. So, I mean, for us, that's a part of the all-IP managed service, really, is to help you yeah. with, with that, chunking that up into your cohorts of, yeah. and, and how to do it. Yeah, fantastic. And still with Charlie, actually, another really good question. Let's just quickly cover this one, and we'll, and we'll close this particular session. Um, is the transition customer-led, vendor-led, or partner-led? So just a, a quick opinion on that from the pair of you. Claire, do you want to...? Our customers, your customers, see their local providers as technology experts. Mm -hmm. And in that instance, they're wanting us to guide them to the right type of technology that fits their business, which is why it's so important that you, you do work with a vendor that can give you the right types of technology depending on what their requirements are. So it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of what that customer needs. It's also a little bit of how you guide them. 
Right, I mean, that, that, that might cover it all, but yeah, you've finally got a, ven a vendor thing that's happening here, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's being switched off, you've got to do that. You've also got customers that are modernizing their business. They're taking advantage of Teams, they're taking advantage of the latest voice services, and they need ever better connectivity to drive it. And ultimately, the resellers in, in the middle and the facilitator of, of that, so it's everything. Fantastic, and I know that just before we wrap up, there'll be many of us who are very concerned about whether elephants can actually swim. Well, thank, thank you, Emra, because elephants are indeed fine swimmers. They can go for 30 miles and for six continuous hours. They're adept at diving as their trunks are handy for snorkeling. So <laughs> <laughs> I, think we've, uh, I think we've nailed that one. So thank you, Emra, Brilliant. for that. Very good. Um, so look, great session. Thank you so much, folks. These, these are genuinely our experts. So please do take the opportunity, if you have it today, to, to collar them and pick their brains. Um, and we'll have plenty more time for conversation with you later on. But for now, Claire, James, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You.